Hello everyone, my name is Zhao Yilin, a student in MIC Business Analytics in Nanyang Technological University. Today I will present my project. I will introduce the procedures of data cleaning and three models, including logistic regression, decision tree, and neural network with Python and R. Now let's begin. First, first I use diabetes data and split data as 70% uh, and 30%. Then I predict using these three models. Uh, next, I calculate the accuracy using configuring matrix. At last, I will state the strength and weakness of three models. Bottom of this PowerPoint uh, is my GitHub code link. Uh, this is my free work. Uh, first, I conduct data cleaning and then conduct data preprocessing. Uh, next, I conduct uh, I use three models to predict the data and then I compare results uh, with mean prediction accuracy of 10 times of each model. Uh, finally, I state the conclusion, the strength and weakness of each model. Uh, the first procedure is data cleaning. First, I input raw data and then I find out error data type. Uh, next, I remove or replace outliers with three methods such as content sort, post plot, and standard deviation. Uh, finally, I output the clean data. Now let's see my Python code. First, I input the data, diabetes mice. Uh, then I want to see the basic information of this, type, this data. As we can see, we have eight variables and the Y class. Next, I want to see the data type of each column. As we can see, the blood pressure and age type is object. It means the data contains the numer numerical type. Then I want to find the, the specific error in age and blood pressure. Next, I will replace this with 22 and this with 20. And I also want to replace B as zero. Now I want to find let outliers. First, I will use the both plots. As we can see, this model contains data between uh, these two data, and these are the outliers. Uh, I think this data is normal, so this matter, this method is not fit in this project. A uh, nice. Uh, I use standard deviation. It means the data can the normal data contains in this range, and these are the uh, outliers. Also, the same as the boss plot, I think uh, 72 and 81 is norm uh, are normal. So this method is not also fit in this project. Then I will use content sort. Uh, I use this. Uh, function to see the count and sort. Based on the uh, common sense and the count, I regard uh, four nine. I regard four nine. One hundred and thirty five as outliers. Then I remove these values and see. The value count. Also, I use this method in blood pressure. Remove the data smaller than 30 and, uh, and bigger than 130 with the 
mean value of normal data as this. And then I have done the data cleaning and uh, reserve this data as Derby Data CSV. Next uh, procedure is data for processing. Uh, I will contain uh, these three methods. Uh, first, I will redefine class uh, as test positive equals to one and test negative is to zero. And then I will split the data at 70% uh, and 30%. Then I will normalize the data in logistic regression and neural network. Uh, I want to uh, replace the value with uh, the range from zero to one, as shown in this picture. We don't need to conduct normalization on decision tree because it doesn't care the value of variables. Instead, it cares the distribution and the possibility between variables. Next, now let's see my Python code. First, I import the data, and then I define the test positive as one. And next, I define the x. Uh, next, I split the data. Uh, in this way, I normalize the train data. Then I define confusion matrix and accuracy. Next, I will predict the data using three models. In the logistic regression, first, I will calculate the normal regression accuracy. Then, I will fit the data in order to figure out the insignificant variables. Uh, then, I remain S1, S2, S3, and S6. Finally, I conduct uh, the final regression accuracy. Let's see my Python code. First, I construct this model, and then I fit uh, this model, and then predict the uh, uh, scaled S test. Then I want to see the accuracy of this model and compare matrix. Then I want to remove the insignificant variables. As we can see, I want to remove the variables which a p-value is bigger than 0 0.01. At least S1, S2, S6. So I remain these values. And then I conduct a linear regression and see the accuracy. In the decision tree, first I construct a decision tree and training it with training data. And then I calculate normal train accuracy at this picture and plot the uh, and plot this tree. And then I compute a list of alpha using CP function in SKLearn library. And then I figure out the best alpha in the list using cross validation method. In this picture, we can see the train accuracy goes down with the increase alpha and the cross validation accuracy goes up first and then goes down with the increased alpha. So this point is the best alpha with the highest accuracy. And next, I prune the tree based on the best alpha. Then I calculate the pruned tree accuracy as shown in this picture. Now, we can see 
my now we can see my Python code and the decision tree. First, I construct this tree and fit the model, and then I predict uh, the data. Finally, I conduct uh, the accuracy and coherence trees of normal tree, as shown in this picture. The tree is uh, the, the tree has too many nodes, children nodes, and then I will prune the tree. First, I first I use cross validation uh, to divide the data into ten, and then I use CP function to uh, output the alpha almost more than than two hundred. Uh, for each alpha, I can I construct the decision tree. And next, I conduct the cross validation uh, for 10 times of each alpha. Now it's uh, training data and it's validation data. Then I feed the model. And next, I calculate the mean validation scores and the mean train scores. And next, I want to find the alpha with the max mean validation scores. So this is uh, the best alpha. Uh, and then I input this alpha into the train model. Then it's my fruit tree model. And I calculate the fruit tree accuracy and coherence matrix at least. As we can see, after being proved, the decision tree will not only be much smaller and also be more robust on the test data set. In the neural network, first I input eight variables, then I build the fully connected layers with 216 neural units, and then uh, it conducts the linear operation. And then I set activation as relu. Next, I construct the fully connected layers with one neural unit. And then I set activation as C mode. Uh, next, the next list model conducts by propagation to trim parameters and the come and go at the approach as 100 and then uh, and then this model inputs the as train data to use this model conduct output if the output is bigger than 0 0.5 then this model will regard it as one otherwise regard otherwise regard it as zero let's see the Python data First is set the input neural unit as input dim, and then it constructs the fully connected layers. And next, it drops out 20% uh, data in order to avoid the overfitting. And then it constructs the second fully connected layers. And now it's the model. Because we have eight variables, so the input is eight, and then fit the model. Finally, we calculate the accuracy and the confusion matrix. Then I run the code. So this is our output. Because the algorithm between Python and R is almost the same, so I will go quickly with the R code. First, I import the library, and then I define the computer matrix and accuracy, and then I import the data database.csv, 
and I defend the class uh, test positive at one and write zero. And then sum summary the data frame at least. And then I split the data. Next, I conduct the logistic regression. I use the GLM and the data based on the train data. And this is the summary of M1. And uh, I want to calculate the normal accuracy as this around. Uh, 80% and then I want to remove the insignificant variables. As we can see, I want to remove the variable which p-value is bigger than 0 0.01. So I remain less, 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 less. Then I conduct the new regression and predict its model and output the accuracy. Next, I conduct the decision tree. I use R part to conduct the decision tree uh, with uh, the train data. Next, I predict the data and output the confirmed matrix and accuracy. At least, and then I want to plot the tree as shown in this picture. And then I output the CP as we see. Uh, I want to figure out the uh, alpha with the minimum S error, as we can see about this value. Then I plot the CP. In this picture, we can also see uh, the best alpha is this, 3. Then I prune the tree. This code means I want to figure out uh, the CP with the minimum S error. And then I prune the tree and uh, I output the print the tree in this figure, 1, 2, 3. And then I predict the data and uh, calculate the print tree accuracy. Next, I will conduct the neural network. Uh, first, I will uh, normalize the data. As we can see in data frame 1, the, the data of these values is between 1 to 0. And then I split the data. Next, I use the net to conduct the N model. I set this size equals to 4. It means it has 1 hidden layer and four hidden nodes. Then I predict the model. And finally, I calculate the accuracy and confirm matrix. Next, I want to compare results because the tree and test data are randomly split each time. The result of each accuracy will be different, so it's more scientific to compare the main accuracy of 10 times. These are my results. As shown in the picture, you can see the main accuracy of 10 times logistic regression is larger than decision tree and is larger than neural network. So we can draw the conclusions. Uh, logistic regression is the best among three models. It's a little better now to drop the insignificant variables in this project.
Also, proning can improve the accuracy of decision tree. Finally, I will state the strength and weakness of three models. As for logistic regression, uh, it has the following strength. It's straightforward to understand and explain, and also it can be regularized to avoid overfitting, and then it can be updated easily with new data. And it also has some weakness. For example, it performs poorly when there are nonlinear relationships. Also, it's not naturally flexible enough to capture more complex patterns. Uh, also, it sometimes can be tricky and time consuming. As for decision tree, it has the following strengths. It can learn nonlinear relationship. It can fairly robust to outliers. It's easy to understand and explain, conduct visual analysis, and to extract rules. It can produce good results for large data in short time. It also has some weakness. It's prone to overfitting because they can keep branch, branching until they memorize the training data. It's easy to ignore the correlation of attributes in the data site. As for neural network, it's very low predict to error. Uh, also, it can capture linear relationships by increasing number of hidden nodes and hidden layers. It's no need to specify a relationship between Y and X. What's more, it has some weakness. It's considered a black box prediction machine with no insight into relationship between input and outcome. Also, it's no variable selection, so you have to exercise care in selecting variables. And then it, it requires heavy requirements if there are many variables and many hidden layers. Thanks for listening. My presentation is over. If you are interested in or have questions about my code or algorithm, please don't hesitate to contact me with email. At the same time, if you are interested in my code, please see it through this GitHub link. Thanks again. Goodbye.